In this video, I say goodbye to an old friend, my Canon M50, and I tell you exactly why this camera is not going to be in my kit anymore. Three, two, one. Hi and welcome or welcome back to DIY Film with Merle Becker, the channel where I help you make better videos. As always, stick around to the end of the video for a bonus tip. All right, let me start out by saying that the Canon EOS M50 is a great camera. As I've talked about in some of my other videos, it's got amazing autofocus and 1080p, interchangeable lenses and external microphone capabilities. It's compact, lightweight, but this past week, something happened to me that put the nail in the proverbial M50 coffin. So here's what happened. I was hired to do a performance video for an amazing band, Sarah Milanovic and Daisy Cutter. And the funny thing is, this video you're watching right now was originally going to be about that shoot and my process. So today I'm taking you along with me on a relatively simple two camera shoot, but it quickly turned into a goodbye M50 video instead. To give you some context, first, I didn't have an assistant for this gig because the band was on a micro budget, which is always challenging, but fine because, you know, I'm all about the DIY. And even though they only asked for one camera, I brought two. In addition to my main camera, my Canon EOS R6, I also brought my M50 as the second camera. Since I was shooting a live performance in a venue with paying dinner guests, I wasn't permitted to set up any external lights or obstruct the stage in any way. However, I was able to get a mixed audio file from the soundboard afterwards, but that's about it. It was a simple, no frills shoot. But for those of you looking to shoot a performance video, just so you know, ideally you want to set up a dedicated performance for your shoot without an audience so that you can put up lights everywhere and crawl all over that stage to get every angle. But as mentioned, that was not the case for this gig. There was no obstructing the stage or anything. So I stayed by my R6, except for occasionally pushing stop and record on the M50. And I pushed up the ISO and the frame rate down on both cameras. I put the R6 stage right and the M50 stage left. And for good measure, I also propped up my iPhone on a little stand attached to my R6's tripod. And I shot some 4K on that. I should mention that I don't usually shoot anything on an iPhone, but I thought in this case I might use it simply for syncing. So there was no operator for the M50 and I was just at the R6. So on the M50, I framed wide and I manually focused where the lead singer would be standing most of the time. I used manual focus because I shoot in 4K and the M50's autofocus in 4K is mostly unreliable. And the reason for that is that in 4K, the M50 uses the less accurate contrast detect autofocus and not the more accurate dual pixel autofocus. And before you scoff at Canon, remember this camera is reasonably priced at around 600 bucks. So the 4K autofocus limitation is just a sacrifice that Canon made to keep the price low. But back to the shoot. On the R6, I had a tighter shot and I followed the action. And of course, I turned on eye detect autofocus on the R6 to get the sharpest focus. So the show ran, the band was great, and when I got home to review everything, here's what I got. The R6 turned out somewhat grainy and soft, but this is to be expected in low light. I did the best I could given the conditions. And here's the iPhone footage. Kind of wacky colors, but in general, it was crisper, albeit uglier than the R6. And lastly, here's the M50, a disaster. Soft slash no focus because everyone was moving around and essentially the footage was unusable, which is why I'm selling the M50. Here's the thing, when I first bought it over a year ago, I was shooting mostly in 1080p. I hadn't committed to 4K yet, but now it's only 4K for me. And I really need a second camera that auto focuses in 4K. And the M50 is not it. So my second camera is now gonna be another Canon EOS R6, and the M50 will be sold to someone who is still either shooting in 1080 or only using it for stills. Like I said, it's a great camera and it was great for 1080p, 
But friends, I need a B cam that's built for 4K, and the little M50 ain't it. So that's my story. Do you own the M50? And if so, how do you deal with the limitations of the autofocus in 4K? Leave a comment below and let me know. Alrighty, let's do a quick tip. When using manual focus on your camera, it's always great to have a large external monitor to fine tune your focus. But if you're on a budget or you're just doing a quick solo shoot with the camera's flip out screen, one easy way to fine tune your manual focus is to magnify the image on your LCD screen. To do this on a Canon camera, look for the little magnifying glass icon on the screen or on the camera itself. Press it, zoom in, and adjust your focus so that it's crisp. Then zoom back out to your desired framing. Because most of the time, that which you thought was in focus is unfortunately not really in focus once you look at it closer. All right, as always, if you found any of this helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when the next one is posted, and I will catch you next time.